Tak się um, ich... Um, to I, will, I will do it in English. Ich versuche es in Deutsch, aber es geht zu langsam. Aber Sie können es sehen in Deutsch. Uh, and I speak to English. Okay? I understand very well German, but I, I don't speak it fluently enough to do this. Well, so. um, but I like the word disertierter. <laughs> There's a lot of nurses disertiert from other organizations. Uh, at this moment, one of my colleagues is doing a speech in Vienna. So, um, Husserl is already known in Austria, and we are working together with uh, Ashoka and uh, House der Barmettigkeit, um, and perhaps in the future with Yamanita. <laughs> You'll see. Um, I, I'm a nurse. I studied uh, economics before, so I did it a few years and then I quit my study, and I became a nurse, and I worked for 15 years as a nurse as a community health nurse. That was uh, very inspiring to work every day with patients, with all kinds of different patients, terminally ill patients, patients with chronic diseases in the community. And after that I became manager director of a big home care organization. I also did it for 10 years and then I was quite disappointed and frustrated about how the organization worked. So I said, I start again with something new, and I called it Busan because I thought the scale of a neighborhood would be the things you can solve on. If you, if you work in a neighborhood, you can always see things. And I think the policy uh, in a lot of countries will focus on neighborhoods. That was my idea. And so it's called Busan, and we started in 2006 with four friends. We quit our jobs and said, okay, this is an adventure. And it's been very well, this adventure. So I will uh, go to the next slide. I see it in English on my slide and you see it in German. Uh, these are uh, some important cornerstones for, for Bilsong. Um, the first thing is that we, if you look at healthcare, uh, usually it's, it's, um, it's very difficult to deliver holistic healthcare. If you look at the payment system, then you are paid, in Holland we were paid for products, so delivering activities. And uh, but what we saw was that a lot of patients um, were troubled by that because they had very many different people coming at their houses. So if you needed help at home, nursing help, then you got somebody who was bringing the personal care, somebody doing the nursing care, somebody taking care for the meals. And if you were, um, if you had bad luck, then sometimes it could be 30, 40 different people coming in your house in one month. So, so we said, we want to integrate as much as possible. If you, if you do several things in one person, you get to know the person better, the patient. And by connecting with the family and the patients, you can do the right things. So that was a very important thing. So we, we tried to reduce the 15 products we had in Holland. We said we are only delivering one service, and that is creating the best possible care for people. So that was our ambition. Then we said we focus on relationships. So uh, I, I think that uh, healthcare is all about building good relationships and understanding each other. If you really understand the patient, you can do the right things. If you just drop in to do the shower, you will never get to know this person really. So, so you have to take time to get to learn each other and you have to focus on relationships. Also relationships between the nurses. So I will explain later on how it, how it works. But the nurses should also be concerned about each other. So they work together in a team on an equal level. There are no leaders. Everybody's responsible. Then we had a system in Holland, in the, in the, it started in the 90s, where the assessment was done by a separate institute. So if you needed care at home, you had to ask for an assessment. It was usually done by phone. And then you got the different products, and then the hours which came with the products. 
and then it went to the provider. So this is a very linear process that you say, I can buy the phone, I can see what you need in the coming years. And I don't believe that. I think you have to understand first how the lives of people are before you can say what people should need. So what we say is we are going to focus on solutions, not on the assessment. The assessment institute disappeared the last few years. So we said the nurses, the nurses can decide themselves on what's necessary to do. So we don't need the assessment, the assessment institute. So in 2015, the Dutch Ministry of Health decided to quit with the assessments. And now it's part of the work of the nurses. So it's part of building a relationship. Then he said, nurses want to nurse. They don't want to do even a lot of, spend a lot of time on administration. <coughs> so he built, there's been research that 40% 40, 40 of the time was spent on administrative tasks. And if you look at we have a problem because we have a shortage of nurses. So why should we spend so much time on administration? It's, it's in my opinion, useless for a lot of people. So we said we, we, we split the nursing process and we try to integrate everything what's needed for the administration in the IT. So we build our own IT system. We call it the Busan Web. So we started an IT company too with my, with my friends. One of them was an IT specialist. And said with a few software engineers, we developed our own software. Now it is the same company that are working 70 people, 70 uh, people doing software engineering and other things, and we have 60 clients in Holland, and it's translated into Chinese, Japanese, uh, English, German, and it's, uh, we, we, we use it all over the world. But it was focused, it was focusing on sharing knowledge, sharing knowledge and sharing information. <coughs> so the nurses are always on the platform, and when they think we have a good, we found a good solution in Amsterdam for this problem. Then they put it on the web, and other nurses can also use it. So that so it works a bit like Facebook. So it's a, it was at the time that Facebook was not accused about using all the data in all this terrible ways. So we created our own Facebook, and everything is integrated. It's also the administration, the knowledge sharing, e-learning. It's all on the on the web. And then we uh, said. Um, if you work in a neighborhood, and a, and a neighborhood is five to ten thousand people, then you, it's, it's possible that you know everybody, because everybody knows you. So it's, it's, we have three, four, five GPs, doctors, we have a pharmacist, we have a, some uh, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, and everybody can find easily each other in this network. So he said, if you create an, an environment where everybody can find each other, then they can create solutions together. So they're working together with volunteers and with other people in the community. And they work every day in the same place so they know what the needs are of this neighborhood. So, that's, so these are the, uh, some of the principles that we use in Bützer. And then it was all because we saw that there was a big problem in Holland in 2006. So, I already mentioned the fragmentation of the care. So we had this standardized uh, activities. So, um, for example, um, it was by the minutes, it was described that for support stockings, you could use five minutes. For a shower, 20 minutes. For a, um, giving an injection, 10 minutes. So it was all based on time and not focusing on how can we solve the problem in this, in this family. So that's 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 a big that's a, a, a was a big problem. The 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 quality went down. So what we saw throughout the years, the quality went down and the costs went up. And it was meant the system was meant to control the costs. But what you saw was the opposite happened, because it was not it was not a logic process. It was a very industrialized process. So they took the industry as an example to organize healthcare. In my opinion, was the biggest mistake we made. Uh, because of that, uh, a lot of uh, nurses split their jobs. So, in, in, between 1995 and 2005, 50% of the bachelor nurses quit.
quit working in home care because I didn't like the conditions and I didn't like the losing the autonomy and uh, every time again uh, register the minutes. <coughs> Even the nurses knew all the codes by hand. So they knew 10, 15 codes, they had to register the minutes. So it was like um, we, they were talking about the patients, they were talking about the problems, but they were talking, is it codes 1035 or so that was the way we were talking. So it's, um, what I already said is that, that clients were confronted with a lot of different uh, care workers and nurses. So I had one. <coughs> so urgent. I think it's a no roof. <laughs> I just learned. <laughs> no, um, there, was a, there was a patient in Amsterdam and he wrote down the names on his door every time a new uh, person came in. And in one year he had 100 names. <laughs> different people. And, and of course when you like to chat with different people, but then I think you should find a site where you can do it. But not as a patient. As a patient, you, you share your intimacy, you share a lot of things, and it's impossible to do that with so many people. So, so that was a very frustrating thing. And then, as I already said, the nurses were very unhappy. And, and I, as a nurse, I, had, I have many friends who are nurses. So this, all these talks, in, 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 when we had a party, all the frustrations <coughs> were there. So I said, we're going to do it differently. In 2006, at the end of 2006, we started with just one team. We, I, before that, we developed, uh, in 2005, 2006, we developed our plans. It was not just an accident, it was very well planned and thought through. Uh, but we said if we, if we create the small teams with a maximum of 12 nurses, they can organize everything themselves. So that's, that's what I did in the 80s when I worked as community nurse. We didn't have a management around us or uh, other people who were disturbing us. So we said <coughs> we just can focus on the patients and we don't have to deal with all kinds of complicated things in the organization. So the idea is that these, these teams would be fully self-supporting. They, they found their own office, they, they bought their own furniture for the office. The only thing we did from the back office was uh, paying for that and supporting that. So they, 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 they don't have to negotiate about all the prices and so this. So they get a standard price for the, for the office and a standard price for the furniture. And then they went to IKEA and together at Wattis. And that was the first test for the team process. They're building the IKEA things. <laughs> it's a lot of trouble in a lot of families. <laughs> I think. Um, so this, the, the idea was that if we, if we uh, let the nurses just do what they think they should do, a lot of things would go right. So, uh, in, in, just in the, in the break we talked about uh, control. <laughs> is there control? Why should there be control? So this is one of the questions that we we don't ask so much about the way we do things, I think, when you are working in an organization. But uh, when I worked as a nurse, I never uh, stood up in the morning and said, I'm, I'm going to do my work on a terrible day today. Nurses just want to deliver good work. So why should we control it? Um, and they are working together uh, very closely in a team, so they know from each other how they are doing. And if uh, somebody is doing it in a bit strange way, then they will discuss it together. That was the idea. So they also were responsible for the results, for the financial results. And usually, uh, most people think that nurses want to deliver care, and they can't be uh, responsible for the finances. But when you make the finances very simple, everybody can be responsible for the financials. So they know very well they know very well where the money comes from and where the money goes the money goes through and what how they can influence their own results. Then if you look at the um, development in, in the first year it was a bit of an experiment, 2007. We thought if it if it will work in different locations in Holland, then it can work everywhere. So we started with 10 locations in 2007. And then more or less it exploded. At the moment we have 950 teams. 
Uh, we didn't do any marketing, so it was all based on free publicity. So we got a lot of attention by the newspapers and the television. Because it was not normal what we were doing. Building an organization without management was strange. So at, at first they said, if, if they're only a small group, with 10 or 50, then of course, it's very motivated people that they would, but not when it's growing bigger. So at the moment we have uh, 10,000 nurses in 950 teams. And besides that, we have 4,000 care workers. So a lot of people said when it's higher educated nurses, well, we can understand that it works. But we were, this also started to work in 2009, 2010 with care workers. So we have special teams for domestic care and supporting uh, people in, in, in that uh, topic. Uh, and they work exactly the same way. So in 2016, we had a takeover from an organization who got bankrupt. So they had, um, we had 2,400 care workers. And from one day to another, that's uh, till the 24th of April, they were working in a very rigid hierarchical organization. And on the 25th of April, they were working in a self-organizing team. And everything went well. So from one day to another, and at the end of the year, 2016, we got quite a good result. We are not for profit, but we, are, we were very profitable. And in the other organization that worked before, they get backwards. So, it's, so it, we only took the, the people who were not working at the office. So the care workers, uh, we only need care workers. So all the people who were doing, all managing, all the scheduling and all these things at the office. They stayed in the office. Um, at the moment, we have uh, around uh, 100,000 clients. So up till now, we took care for 600,000 since the start. And up till now, we had uh, throughout the years we had three, three complaints. So that was the result. So a lot of a lot of uh, problems are prevented because the way the teams deal with it is very preventive. And it leads it, it was in, only in, in certain circumstances to um, complaints. Uh, then about the, uh, the money. So that the money should support the nursing care. So it's not, we, we don't have to focus on money. Of course, the, the money has to be there. So we grew from 400 euro in 2006 to 400 million euro in 2017 and we still use the same sheets we have a very simple cost structure is that the income per hour is around 60 euro and the cost per hour are around 58 euro so then we have two euro left and we spend this two euro on innovation education quality so these are and it's a very simple model that everybody understands so if you have a productivity of 60 percent so if the the billable hours of the nurses are 60%, then everything's going well. And all the teams understand that. So they try to, to focus on uh, the clients, and they know once in a while they discuss how we're doing well. All the information is on the web, so they can see how they're doing on, on quality and on uh, satisfaction of the patients, and they can also see how they're doing financially compared to the other teams. So there is always a a bit of a competition because nobody wants to, to be on down on the list. That's a bit uh, psychological, I think. But you said it's, it's a guideline that, that if, if teams are performing well, everybody's doing that. And at the end of the year, they get an extra bonus. We give them an extra payment if you have enough results, a good result. Because it's, we call it the relation re repair bonus. So because they are so engaged, that sometimes the partners, usually the husbands, are a bit uh, dissatisfied about their uh, role at home. So they have to cook and they have to do things. So then we say we repair this relationship by giving this bonus. This is uh, how our organization looks like. <laughs> the green, uh, these are all the nurses that are this. And this is the back office. So we have 50 people in the back office doing the administration, also no management, 
So there are small groups. Uh, four ladies are doing the salary, so 40,000 people. Um, you have the financial administration, you have the client administration. Um, so all the support is coming from, from back office, and then we have 21 coaches. And the coaches, uh, the teams can ask for support from a coach when they need it. So I, I always say that uh, managers are always, always there, also when you don't need them. So then there can be a big problem. Um, so the, the, the idea is every time again start bottom up with what the nurses need and listen to what they say instead of making plans. So we don't make strategic plans, policy plans or whatever. I just write my blog once in a while and then I get a lot of response on it. And that's how we communicate with each other. So the team they decide together what kind of innovations or quality things they are doing in their own neighborhoods. They can de define projects, preventive projects. We have two directors, so I'm one of them. Uh, we don't have a management team, so up till now we never had management team meetings. So we don't make minutes, so we just do every time again the same things. So, so you, you hear a lot about change and innovation. And I think a lot too, too, much, too much change and innovation is a big risk. We should focus on continuity. So continuity in what you're doing well is very important. So you should build on what you already are doing well. Instead of every, every few years again, we have a new vision, we have a new strategy. It sounds very well, but it's a big risk for society. If you look at the, uh, the client satisfaction, what we wanted to show from the start is that by connecting with the client, the results uh, for the clients would increase. So that's not a, it's not uh, a very uh, difficult thing to understand. But, but what what uh, uh, happened at the same time was that the um, the hours can be delivered decreased with 30, 40 percent. So we, we we spend less hours with the patient. In total, and the satisfaction <coughs> went up. So, and a lot of people think that people want as much as possible care. But our idea is that people want to be independent. So we focus, we focus on independence. And then the, the nurses, we got a lot of complaints about from our competitors because we have in Holland we have a, a competitors in, in home care, and they said if you go to work for Bootser, you go back to the Middle Ages. So it's, it's, you have to be available 24 hours a day and, and so on. So a lot, a lot of these uh, colleagues were um, warning the nurses. But, but in one of the organizations they even wrote three pages with reasons why you should not go to work for Luther. But then these nurses became very curious and they found us on the internet and said, oh, interesting. So and then they joined us. So we got a lot of help from our competitors. <laughs> um, but because of that, we wanted to show that it was not uh, a big burden. So we, we, did, we uh, participated in the annual um, Best Employers um, research. And, and we became five, five times in a row, we became the best <coughs> employer of Holland. We also wanted to show that by organizing this way, that we could spend much more money on the nurses and the patients. So we only have 8% overhead costs, uh, while most organizations 25 to 30 percent. So we can spend all the money on where it's, it's meant for, I think. And we have 1,200 1, new nurses per year joining us. And just because mouth, mouth to mouth, uh, mouth to ear, I call it, yeah, something like that. So all these nurses, they, they know nurses. So they talked about it with their friends, and they said, it's nice to work this way, so join us. So sometimes there were groups of 20, 30 people at one time who said, when, when can we start? So I said, talk about it with your husband first, because <laughs> it's, uh, it can be a big problem afterwards. Uh, this, is, this is our vision. So in the old system, it was very activity driven, production. We, we make um, contracts with the health insurers, and we call it Production agreements. 
Those folks think I'm production. So I, I said, that's a strange thing because we should focus on good healthcare. So we should, we should have agreements on how can we improve healthcare. So what we said is we, we, uh, we uh, support people in their independence and we monitor the results. And by doing that, we want to show that the quality will increase and the costs will go down. At the moment, we are, with, with some of the health insurers, we are developing agreements together. So they said, for example, for mental care. They said, what is good mental care? Okay, then let's describe it. What are the methods we are going to use? How are we going to monitor it? And what do we do when we don't agree? And in, in the contract, we said, then we have a good glass of wine together. It's in the agreement. So then we got a discussion about who has the best wine. But as yet, it's, it's changing. So the, the, the perception in Holland and as you also see in other countries about how to do things together is changing. And the system has to change, in my opinion. This is the place where the bits of teams are working. So they are in the community, working with the community, with volunteers, with uh, other people in the community. And every time again, every, working with every patient is a new project. So you can see it as a small project, working with the family, how is this family, how can we contribute to the quality of life, and what, what can we do in this situation. It's all based on, on principles of self-organization. So um, uh, I, I will show some books afterwards at the last slide. But there is a lot of things written now about self-organization. So it's, it's in, I was a few weeks ago I was in Moscow, and even in Russia, <coughs> and I want to organize differently. Um, the idea is that you can trust people, you can trust nurses. We, we, we build too many control systems based on distrust. So why should we trust? Also, we, we build a lot of complexity. So we should we should make things more simple. Delivering. Delivering good healthcare is not so complex. You need a good nurse and a good connection with the patient. And then things are going by itself if you don't disturb it with all kinds of regulations and protocols. So we, with our IT system, we try to reduce the complexity. Um, they're all generalists, the nurses. The nurses, they should work, uh, they are able to work with every patient so that the flexibility in the team is optimal. Because they are 24 hours per day available. As a team, eh? not as a person. <laughs> um, they have their own education budget, so they decide themselves on what they should learn and how they should do it. So everybody knows what you're good at and what are your weak points, and then you can decide yourself uh, how, how you want to be educated. All the ideas based on that a lot of structures are quite a problem. So we said informal networks. If every nurse in her neighborhood has 10 to 15 informal networks, then the whole team is 10 times 15 is 150. If you have 10,000 nurses, you can cover all the, com the, com the country in uh, Holland. So a, a, lot of, a lot of nurses use these networks to create good solutions. Sometimes they even go to the mayor and say, we have a problem in our neighborhood. Can we talk about it? So they take responsibility. And usually it's done by the management and a lot of organizations. But the ownership of the nurses creates these kind of things. And is a much better solution, in my opinion. So this is what we do in, in our head office, back office. Um, so we, we don't have management at all. So it's, it's all based on um, practical ways of working. The way we do things at the head of is not based on big HR strategies, but just common sense. How can we create practical contracts for the nurses? Uh, what do we need for legal things? And so on. What, what, what was really a surprise was the IT system. So uh, when we started, we didn't know what, what IT could do when we developed it ourselves because we had the experience in, in the home care organization I was before that a lot of nurses were quite frustrated because of the administration 
and IT was focusing a lot on administration. So, when, so we said we are going to develop the IT system together with the nurses. And our optimal goal is to create a community for patients and nurses. So now the, the patients can also participate on our web. So they can uh, connect with the nurses, also the families. So when the families are living far away, they can see what the nurses are doing with their parents. And they can also give advice. Uh, so, they, so you can use the information of the families all the time and you can communicate with them. So the idea is that this creates an equal ownership of what's needed to be done with the patient. So because there is, very easily there is a, a power thing going on that the professional decides over the patient. So I said, no, if, the, if you want the patient to be in control, they should be able to communicate about everything. So the care plan is developed together. All the nurses have an iPad, so they, together with the patient, they make a care plan and then monitor what they're doing. If, when it comes to quality, we, we introduced the Omaha system in Holland. And, and the Omaha system is, a, is a, um, a classification system which monitors the problems, interventions and outcome. So for example, we measure uh, the, the knowledge. So when that you have diabetes and you don't know what diabetes can do with you, then you, you will have an extra problem, I think. If you, if you know what diabetes is and how you can live your life uh, with diabetes, then you will be more independent. That's one of the things. So, so we measure what's with the start, what's the knowledge, what's the behavior, and what's the status. And then we evaluate over time. And it's done in the, uh, the iPad, so we have all the data. So we have a few hundred thousand files now. Uh, and we do research with the University of Trenton on what do we see as patterns? What do we see with people with dementia? What kind of interventions do we do? What, what do we see as best practices? So we learn a lot from all this information. And it's just, nurses don't need to do anything extra. It's already there by the many organizers. These are all new things we start with. So bits of tea is the tea is for therapy. It's a bit uh, working with psychiatrists, psychiatric nurses, so it's, it's for mental care, uh, maternity care, crown, uh of persons with uh, occupational therapists and physiotherapists. Bits of house is uh, hospices. We developed uh, eight, nine hospices hospices, so places where people can stay at, at the end of life if they can't stay at home. Uh, pension is for rehabilitation, so that people can stay for a few weeks if they can't stay at home or if they live in the hospitals and they can't go home yet. Um, with living, is, uh, one of my dreams is that we can avoid a nursing home. So that we create places in neighborhoods where people can live instead of going to nursing homes. So there are apartments where people can hire the apartment and the care around is organized. Uh, together with, with the people from the neighborhood. Boots of Young is youth care. Uh, Burgitz is a, that's the social care part, about 4,000 people. <coughs> and the, the Maya Foundation is for doing projects in Africa. So we also support projects in, in developing countries. So we're doing projects in Malawi and Kenya and Ghana uh, to contribute to developments there. So, we are very idealistic. Uh, we, uh, and we learn a lot from it. So the overhead costs uh, are just 8%, as I already said. And the, the model is very financially, it's very uh, sustainable. Because every year again, we know already what the critical things are. So we negotiate with the health insurance about the price. And every year it becomes easier. So we had some troubles in the past because of the fast growth. So when we grow so fast, every year with 50, 60 million, the health insurance said, you're growing much too fast. We said, I can't tell that all the clients choose for us. So that's, and now it's, they agree on, on, on everything. So we, we, we had a quite a good position. We, we did a lot of researches, also on, on costs and with, with KPMG and uh, Ernst & Young. So we wanted to show 
that by focusing on the quality, that the costs go down. So and we showed in this two reports that we spent 35 to 40 percent less hours than the average home care organization in Holland. So I then, um, from from the start in 2007, we got a lot of visits from politicians, because they always want to be connected with something which is popular. So we got the Minister of Health, uh, and she, she really supported us from the start. So she asked me to come to The Hague and said, please tell us about this, because we have to build our policies on what's really needed in practice. And she talked with the nurses, and she was really moved by the nurses. And now we had a, a, a lunch together uh, a few weeks ago. She's not a minister anymore. She was the last government, she was Minister of Education. But now she was a client. So uh, her father was coming from the hospital and she had to deal with a team. I said, now, now I experience myself and I'm so happy that I supported you because it's the best thing that I can have now. So, um, so we became more or less friends, at least we meet each other once in a while. So that's, um, it's, and it's all, uh, the, the, one of the first speeches was about it, the CEO. Uh, and I think that's connecting with people based on what's really happening in daily practice, and then trying to understand how can we change the system that is helping people, instead of bothering people. That was one of the discussions we often had. Um, uh, we, we worked with all the political parties, we have a lot in, in Holland. And the right parties always said, oh, we, it's very entrepreneurial. And then the left parties said, oh, it's based on solidarity. So for, for everybody, there was something in it. <laughs> and the last few years, we, I also advised that other industries like schools. Uh, for example, we go a lot with uh, schools in, in Holland based on the same principles. And I even advised parents. So. This is about innovations. Um, apart from the ones I already mentioned, is this one that I think is the most beautiful one. It's, it's uh, the Walker race. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's introduced in 2010 by one of the nurses who had a patient, and the patient said, there are competitions for everybody, but not for us. <laughs> Elderly behind the Walker, Romato. Okay? Okay? So she said, okay, I'm going to organize it. And she went to the city hall in Amsterdam and to the health insurance, she got 10,000 euro. And in 2010, the first time, she organized it in Amsterdam, in a park. And it was on television and in the newspaper, and I didn't know it. So I, I sent her an email, I said, beautiful what you did, but how come I didn't know it? I said, I sent you emails, and you said, go on, very well, good idea. That's usually what I do. <laughs> I usually don't know what ideas we have, but um, now it's good to give compliments, eh? you know, it's, it's looking very positive. And now it's in 2017, uh, every year again now, we have a national walker race uh, in the Olympic Stadium in Amsterdam. <laughs> so there are competitions all over the country, there are groups of people who are exercising, uh, and then training for the 400 meters, for the 800 meters, <coughs> the maximum is 2,000 meters. They get a medal and a certificate, and the eldest one was 104 last time. So, but imagine what it means that, that grand-grandchildren see their grand-grandmother training for an Olympiad and get a medal, 104. So it's amazing, it's always happening, music around it, and food, and, and sometimes somebody needs a note roof. <laughs> yes. One, one of the other had a more or less a heart attack. Things can happen. There's not a reason not to do it. Uh, this is what happened uh, from, I think, 2009 to 2010. A lot of countries, uh, a lot of people in different countries got, got interested in, in our uh, way of working. So I went a lot to Asia, so we are working in all the Asian countries, uh, China, Japan, Korea, uh, Taiwan, Singapore, India, um, Australia, Canada, uh, and in Europe, and in Austria, of course, and it will grow. Um, and it's all based on the same simple principles. So every time again we say, okay, we build it from bottom up, 
And if nurses uh, and doctors and people understand it, it will grow by itself. You have discussions with people in the system. And even in Germany, I was, I was surprised that we had, we had a meeting with uh, Minister Grower, so he was also interested. And um, we had a meeting with the health, health insurers in, in Germany. And one of the health insurers said, we like the, um, the, the philosophical, ethical part of it. And that's for a health insurer. I thought so. That's very important. So I think the, 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 the things are changing. And if, if you all the time use practical examples by showing how it can be done and how it can change, then at the end, I think it, it will take some years, but it's not a problem. We have time. So uh, our idea was in 10 years' time we can change the healthcare in Holland. So that was when, when we started. And, and it happened. So what we are doing now is the standard in Holland. Uh, and I think it will become also a regular thing in a lot of other countries if we just go on like this. These are some books um, I can uh, advise if you want to know more about what will happen about uh, organizational things, then Reinventing Organization is a very good book. So it's, it's from Lalu, uh, Frederick Lalu. Um, he wrote in his book how we think in the past, how we thought in the past about organizational development and what will be the future organization. And, and we are in this book described as one of the examples. Um, and he has three, three principles. One is self-organization, so it's that organization should be should based as much as possible on self-organization. Uh, second is wholeness, so how can you be yourself in the organization you're working? So how can you show your talents? How can you just, not, not just that little part that's useful for the organization, but be yourself with all your talents? And the, the third one is evolutionary purpose, how can you contribute to something bigger it serves the community or the society as a whole. Then the other book is from Shada Nandram, Organizational Innovation by Integrating Simplification. She studied Busa for three years and she developed the Integrating Simplification Theory. So it's, a very, it's quite a difficult book, <laughs> but it's about simplification. So it's, it's an academic book. Um, it's, it's, it's very nice because uh, she even uh, visited my mother and she, she wrote a chapter about how my mother thinks and, and because she said she wanted to know where it comes from. So, then, so there is a chapter, Mother the Block. <laughs> and then we work together with uh, people who support teams in um, kind of a training, but it's not, not really a training, it's, it's one afternoon and how, how can we solve problems in a solution-driven way. So how can we focus on the solution? So the teams, when they have a problem, of course, every, everywhere where people are working together, they can bring problems or conflicts or whatever. But if you focus on the problem, you can easily get a bigger problem. So I said we should focus on the solution. And the methods they developed are based on how children solve problems. So when you see little children, they can have a fight, and within 10 minutes, they can be friends again. That should be good for us too, I think. <laughs> so these are the, the books I, I can um, advise, and then this is uh, our slogan. If, if, you, if you keep it small and simple, things will, things will go by itself. So, it, but what's, what's important um, is that you, when, you, when you're doing this, uh, and you are in a traditional organization, um, it's very difficult to do it in a traditional organization. So, uh, organizations who are experimenting with this, it, it would be wise to just split a little bit of the organization from the rest. Because if the back office and the management stays the same, it won't, it won't happen. So we, we, we supported several organizations in the change and all these organizations we experimented just with a small part, with a few teams and when things were going well, the rest of the organization was learning from it and then we made a big change. This was uh, what I wanted to share with you and I hope it's uh,
helpful in your own place and organization. Thank you very much.